What's up everyone, Willy Apple here, and today Apple has released macOS Ventura Release Candidate 2 to all testers, and in this video I'll be showing you what is new in the software. On my M1 MacBook Air, it came in at 570.8 megabytes, which is almost half the size of RC1. I'm going to show you what is new right now. The new build number is 22A380, whereas before it was 379, so that means Apple fixed one major issue inside of macOS Ventura. And the Apple Silicon firmware version was unchanged, and I don't know about T2 BridgeOS, but I would have to assume that is the same. So if we were to take a look at the build numbers right here, we can see that both Safari and Photos changed. I would have to assume that the issue was with Photos, since Safari feels pretty smooth. Also, Safari just got a little minor update right here, whereas with Photos, they did not add a number right here. There has to be a fourth number right here in order for it to be considered a minor update. And minor updates are like just changing some wordings or just some of the code around just a little bit. Whereas right here, they actually fix bugs. So there's probably a bug fix somewhere inside of the Photos app. And I would have to assume it's with the iCloud shared photo library. However, if that is not the case, there's probably been some issues with the system crashing. And if we're going to take a look at my feedback app right here, I can also confirm that the clock app issue is not fixed as of right now. Hopefully this gets fixed in either a 13.0.1 or 13.1. Be on the lookout for those betas when they come out, if there are any. Apple could have also released this update because they are planning on releasing new MacBooks and they actually need to make sure the Macs are supported. So maybe they weren't supported on RC1 and RC2 fixes that. We don't know for sure. They could have also done what they did with the M2 MacBook Air where they could have secretly released a version of Monterey 12.4 specific to those new MacBooks. However, Apple probably did not do that here. They probably want to keep everything organized with the new MacBooks. The release notes also seem to be the same as well. And I also ran a quick Geekbench test. We got a 1750 on the single core and a 7751 on the multi-core. Comparing it to RC1, we got a 1752 on the single core to below and a 7739 on the multi-core. That is about 20 above. This is a new best Geekbench score. Since single core doesn't really matter, since there's not a lot of things only use one core anymore these days. Also, if I were to run it again right here, it would be different and I would be sure to stop the recording. Geekbench doesn't usually tell the full story. It's only if there's a major jump where they, it tells a story. So it's always good to take a look at the Geekbench course to make sure that performance stays the same. I would also like to briefly talk about iOS 16.1 since I'm not going to make a separate video for that. So in this press release right here, we get an exact release date. If we were to search up October, we would see starting October 24th. So October 24th is when macOS and iPadOS will be releasing. So now we have confirmed release date of iOS 16.1 as I predicted earlier. I actually predicted this like a couple months ago. Other than that, there is nothing else new in the software. So thanks for watching, comment, like, subscribe, share this with your friends. I'm gonna leave the link of this Mac Rumors post down in the description down below so you can actually contribute to this. Comment and reply down below what your experience is with Release Candidate 2. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!